This video, dealing with corresponding parts of similar triangles, is going to take some concepts that you are already familiar with and apply them into a new situation, namely that of proof writing. The first two situations that you are already familiar with are listed right there at the beginning of the notes. You already know that similar triangles have corresponding sides that are proportional. You also know that similar triangles have corresponding angles that are congruent. So in other words, if we're told that triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ, what conclusions are we able to draw about the, course, the sides and the angles? Well, we know first of all that the corresponding sides have equal ratios or are proportional. And that secondly, the corresponding angles are congruent. And since I know that the proof is the part that you're dying to get to, let's go ahead and jump right into the proof. In the givens, we're told that angle ACB is a right angle, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that in the diagram. And we're told that segment CD is perpendicular to segment AB. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that in the diagram. And they want us to prove that the ratio between AD and DC is the same as the ratio between AC and CB. Secondly, they want us to prove that the product of AD and CB is equal to the product of DC and AC. As soon as you see this proportion in the proof, you want to think to yourself to use similar triangles. Likewise, anytime you see two products being equal in a proof, you want to think to yourself, use similar triangles. And you might be asking yourself, well, how do I know which triangles to prove similar? Because if I look over here at the picture that they've given to us, there are actually three triangles in that picture. There's a big one and a, it's two smaller ones. The way we're going to determine which triangles are going to be used is by looking at the proportion or looking at the sides that are being multiplied together. We've got side AD. Side AD, I can already tell that this is going to be one of our triangles because the only triangle that side AD is a part of is that red triangle. Uh, likewise, we have side CB. Side CB is that purple one right there. Now that purple one could potentially be uh, a side in two different triangles. It could be the smaller triangle on the right, or it could be a side in the whole big triangle. So in order to determine which triangle it is that I'm going to use in my proof, I'm going to go ahead and keep on looking. Um, side DC is also a side that's being mentioned, but that's already been used in my red triangle. Side AC we haven't talked about yet. Side AC is a side in the big triangle. So that tells me if I put these two purple sides together that the triangle that I'm going to need is the big purple triangle. So my goal or my mission is to prove the big purple triangle similar to the smaller red one. So in order to do that I'm going to use angle angle similarity. Notice that Angle A is shared between the red triangle and the purple triangle. It's going to have to be congruent to itself. Notice that in the purple triangle, triangle ACB is a right angle. And in the red triangle, angle ADC is a right angle. Those two right angles are going to have to be congruent to each other, giving us a second pair of congruent angles. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by proving these two triangles similar using the angle angle similarity postulate. So I'm going to start by talking about, or writing about, the right angles. So I've got angle ACB is a right angle already. I know that's a true statement because it's given to us to be a true statement. We're also told that segment CD is perpendicular to segment AB. We know that's a true statement because it's given to us to be a true statement. Because those two segments are perpendicular, we can go ahead and conclude that angle ADC is a right angle. And we know that's a true statement because perpendicular lines form right angles. Now, 
Now that these two guys are right angles, I can go ahead and conclude that they're congruent. And there's the first of two pairs of congruent angles I need to discuss in my proof. The second is going to be fairly simple to pull in. Angle A is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Now that I've got two pairs of congruent angles, I'm all set to go ahead and say that those two triangles are similar. When I name them, I have to be very careful and make sure I get their corresponding parts lined up. So I'm going to call the first one triangle ADC, and that's similar to the second one. And the angle in the purple triangle that corresponds to angle A is also angle A. The right angle at D matches up with the right angle at C in the big purple triangle leaving the last angle, angle B. And those two triangles are similar due to angle-angle similarity. Now that those two triangles are similar, I know that number one, all their corresponding sides are in proportion, and that number two, all their corresponding angles are congruent. The one that's appropriate for me in this particular proof that we're trying to prove is we're trying to prove that these pairs of corresponding sides are in proportion. So that's where I'm going to go next. The ratio between AD and DC. Is the same as the ratio between AC and CB. Now you can say similar triangles have corresponding sides that are in proportion. When two triangles are similar, their corresponding sides are proportional. So there's the first of the two statements that we were trying to prove. Once we get to here, the second part of that is fairly simple, because notice that if I go ahead and cross multiply, I'm going to have the second part of what it was that we were trying to prove. So the product of AD and CB is equivalent to the product of DC and AC. I'm just going to use cross multiplication. So this merely takes the proofs that we did the previous day one step further into talking about their pairs of corresponding sides and angles. Up at the top of the next page, I want you to think about what is important from this video. What do you think is going to be important for you to remember and be able to do? And then once you've identified the key ideas and important understandings, let's see if you can go ahead and in number two, apply what you've learned in this video to a new situation.